All right, Hayden O'Neill joining us today, my old producer who coaches at Kids Level, coaches his son Big Red on the North Shore. Rule changes, Hades. What does it all mean? Well, mate, it's, not, it's nothing to be scared of, and it's nothing that's going to change the game too dramatically to the casual observer. It's probably going to speed the game up even more than what it is now because you're going to see a vast majority of tackles now with what they call those... They're trying to move to that anyway. It's like that chop-style tackle to get the player on the ground. So it's going to stop that... It stops a lot of that argy-bargy wrestling in the game. Um, and it's only, it's only a good thing moving forward. It really is. It really is. OK, so why it's, is it a good thing right moving move. forward? I okay, would we'll explain that then. Why is it? Well, it's the first step. Because the first step forward is they've got to look like they actually care about the well-being of players. Because at the moment, until up until this point... They haven't really. They've always worried about catching the ball in the air and lifting tackles, but they'll never worry about the big issue, which is the head contact. You know, they've still got a massive problem on their hand because 50 to 60% of the game is still going to be, there's going to be upper body head contact at the breakdown. Yeah. So they've got to address that soon too. So the, the, the game itself, and they must be terrified, they're going to have to change the look of rugby intensely soon because you tell me how you clean somebody out when they're bent over the ball or they're contesting a ruck and you don't make contact with the, even the upper parts you know, of their head. It happens every single game you watch, but we're so focused on the tackle. So there's big changes coming, and this is just the first step because safety and, like, the big problems the NFL's had, Martin, yeah, this yeah, is what it's all coming yeah. from, the duty of care. Well, it's interesting you put, you know, you, you put that perspective on it because, we you know, watching the Rugby League World Cup, and I, I'm still absolutely stunned by the fact that Warrior Hargraves gets one match for that, and I know that the Rugby League's saying it hit the shoulder or whatever before it hit his head. I mean, for God's sake, if you're talking about player welfare, that sport is in the absolute King Kong age, isn't it? Yeah, well, it is, absolutely. But, I mean, you, you, I, I do coach kids rugby, and the kids now, and the whole point of doing it in junior rugby first is that we're going to condition the kids right the way through so when they come to senior rugby, it's not a thing. So, yes, it's going to be difficult for, you know, the 35-year-old, you know, blindside flanker for the third-grade team to change, you know, 15 to 20 years of rugby. But every single kid right now who plays rugby up to, you know, 13, 14 years old, they understand. Right. And high tackling. So anything above the centre in a game, the players stop immediately and it's a penalty instantly on the spot. Oh, wow. So they, it's, actually, it's actually a free kick now, so they've taken the stigma of it being a penalty because some kids get upset still, obviously, sure. as seven and eight-year-olds. Yeah. And so every kid's going to grow up now and they're going to understand that high tackling or tackling above the sternum area or the nipple area, as they call it, and they giggle every time they say it, mm. um, is just not rugby. And so the biggest, hard, the hardest thing right now is explaining this to this current generation who played rugby their whole lives and now they've been told they have to play differently and tackle differently. Yeah, and also for us fans, that's how we're watching it because as soon as you, you hear this, your initial reaction is, oh, hang on a second, what are you doing now? I mean, how's this going to disrupt the game? There's one caveat they do say, while the first tackler must target the belly or below, the second tackler can still make contact under the current laws beneath the shoulders. So how does that work? Well, that's targeting the ball. So wherever the ball's been carried. Um, and so that, that's, yeah, so th this, is, this is their get out of jail clause card when somebody makes, at an international level, makes a close to illegal tackle that gets penalised and they need to review it. Yeah. And so they can say, oh, he's a second man in, there's mitigating circumstances, right. um, he's going to get away with a yellow card offence on the game, and that's fine. Um, I think, to be honest, the bigger, the bigger picture about it this, Marty, is I hope that it doesn't go down the road of being red card first and then talk about it later. I think they need to, because there's going to be a lot of yellow cards and red cards like we've got already. Yeah for people who are making incidental contact in a tackle where there's a couple of centimetres in it. And how rigorous are they going to be around that? And are we going to have games where we get, you know, six yellow cards versus four yellow cards? So Hayden Which I know you love. Hayden O'Neill's with us on the platform and coaches, um, he coaches his, his, his own son and a lot of young, other young men and young women who are playing rugby. Another one that they're trialling, I don't know whether this actually involves what you're going to be doing, but it's a maximum scrum push of 1.5 metres next season, which is when you... Put it so it's a bit. It's a good. It's a good step and a bit. So what are they saying? So when the shunt goes on, when they in that you're only allowed to push back there. You don't actually see that many scrums being pushed back that far anyway, do you? No, you don't because the ball's in and out pretty quickly. This is another safety feature, and kids have been doing this in secondary schools. Have been in this for since I played secondary school rugby, especially in Australia. Um, the only thing that this will this will do again is this will be difficult for senior grade rugby when again you're talking to you know, 35-plus-year-old props who have played the game for years, um, and all of a sudden you're saying, sorry, guys, your scrum dominance is over. Um, you can't score from that position. So you've taken away the, the ability will change. This will change rugby again at that level where you'll effectively be 
win, you can win sanctions or penalties from having a crap scrum. Oh, I see. That sucks, doesn't it? Because, I mean, <clears throat> one of the things... And you know they'll export it. That's the first thing they'll export, isn't it? Right, of course. What would yeah. you do? Yeah, I've mean, got a rubbish scrum, so let's have a rubbish scrum and let's, and let's just say, ref, one and a half metres, one and a half metres. Ah, see, and then have, right. And then have fitter players different, and have different body-shaped players. So once you know? so if you're going backwards, basically you guys just saying, okay, either drop to your knees or actually sort of for, you know, make that backward motion. The crumb, you, your, your, your whole side's going to collapse. Therefore, it's your penalty because they push too hard. That's, that's what happened in Australia when it first happens, when they first brought in these rules. And it's the same thing. You've got to remember, do you remember when they brought in the twisting the scrum rule, Marty, that if you could, if you could twist the scrum, you get a turnover? Yeah, remember yeah. when that first happened? Yeah, totally, yeah. And the first, thing that happened, the first thing that happened is every single loose head prop and tight head prop in the world, one would push forward and one would pull back, and yeah. the scrum would whip around. Yeah. So then they had to change the rule again to bring in you know, the stepping around the corner rule. Okay? And so don't be, this is gonna, there's going to be more adds, additions to this. So the law book's going to get longer and longer and longer. But ultimately, what's going to happen? Okay, so from you, when you start coaching next year, it's not a massive change in what you're already telling the kids. That's what you're saying. Well, zero change because at next year, uh, so my boy will go into like a, I guess you'd call an under twelve grade. Yeah. Um, and so there is contested scrums. It's half a meter, so there's no chance really of a turnover. Yeah. Because it's all about safety. The tackle height is no different. Um, it just means that everybody's on the same page, and we're all going to be playing the same game. I think you sort of look the same to the kids when they watch. Because the one thing that our kids watch, we go to the Blues a lot, yeah. and the first thing they go, oh, high tackle. Ah. Well, high tackle because it's fine, it's super yeah. rugby. Yeah, yeah. And so they whinge and bitch and moan about it. Because on Saturday, mate, I'll tell you, like when you watch junior kids sport, if there's contact above the chest, the whole game stops and the kids know. Wow. They just stop. Yeah. So Yeah, they know. So, I mean, this is, this, is, this is what I find really fascinating, and, 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 and no one really does explain this. So, when it, and, you know, you've got full contact tackle and everything going on. Does, have you seen, have you seen, because you know, this is the big worry for all parents, right? If the kids are playing eight, nine, ten years old and they start getting into the contact and that, what's going to happen? Do they get injured? Do they get concussion? Have you ever seen much head knock stuff at your, at, 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 at your boy's age and, and also added to that concussion stuff? Yeah, we have, and they're absolutely ruthless on the rules around it. Um, we have an app that we use at our club, and straight away, if your kids, if you have a kid that's suspected of a head knock, they are because you, you've got duty of care, right? Yeah. You're in charge of these kids. You're not. You're not a doctor. The kids have to be withdrawn. It's a real focus in junior rugby, and you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I totally agree with it because that's the space I'm in, and so I see this. You know, and I see it all the time, and so we have to be really careful about it. We have kids that get ruled out. And you've got to follow protocols with doctors, and they get you know stand downs and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know that happens at junior rugby. A lot of parents are slow to get on board with that because they want you know they want to live their lives vicariously through their kids and watch you know their kids score a hundred tries on the weekend and have fun because you know yeah it's, it makes them the feel better. better. Yeah, of course, mate. Yeah, but we want the, we always want the best for our kids. It's just you know whether we're good at you know whether we're doing that for other kids as well. So the junior space has really changed dramatically, and it's gone more focused on keeping kids in the game and not focusing so much on this elitism and that you're going to be, you know, you're an elite 11-year-old rugby player that's, you know, destined to be an all-black because we all know that, I think, what is it, 0.04% of the so, kids will be all-blacks. 